Before I begin, I want to be transparent and lay my cards on the table. Give a quick background of me and what I believe in, as that I am a person that has some biases that some people ought to know about. It will be brief, don't worry. I've lived in the United States all my life. I'd be considered white and male. I do get rather heated at times for the reason that I am a reformed or former fascist. I've since turned into a centrist anarchist that leans socialist. I am mostly motivated by my main hatred of power and authority. I dictatorship and authoritarianism. I am a Christian, but I have a general dislike and distrust of churches and pastors. I am also generally anti-war as well, but I'm not advocating for my political beliefs at the moment. If I was going to do that, I'd make a different video for it. This is just to say anything in this channel is presented by someone who has lived that life and believes those things. Also, I'd like to mention that I am not a very credible source. I am still barely out of high school. I'm not a super spy or a doctor or have gone to much college. I just read a little bit more than normal, and always remember that I'm just some guy on the internet and you should treat me as such. I take in information, and I typically interpret the information. Most of my videos are interpretations of information, and those can be interpreted in many different ways. These are my interpretations. If you've been consuming media recently, you have most likely have come across some form or another of misinformation. It's been a lot of things, conspiracy theories, misinterpreted facts, or just outright nonsense that somebody's saying for money. Some of it is just normal lies and mistruth that happens with just humans in general that's something we're really, really good at. But sometimes it feels like there's just something out there, manipulating, inflaming situations beyond what seems normal, reasonable, or organic. And in some situations, that actually can be deliberate misinformation. And in some cases pertaining to Ukraine and Russia, it's Russian hybrid warfare. Before disinformation spreads, it has to be engineered. Unlike more, some more local organic forms of disinformation and lies, Russian disinformation in particular has a goal. They'll pick a target, a preferred victim or class of victims, if you will. They'll cater to whatever they already believe and enemies they already have, functioning as kind of a helper by providing narratives and information that could help said victim in their cause. Let's say if you are targeting those who are already critical of the current US presidency and how much money the government spends. A message that the government is spending incredible amounts of money in Ukraine and not on domestic issues would be candy to their victim. And if it sticks then, that victim group would be less likely to support money going to Ukraine. Their goal was to take support away from Ukraine. Wherever that money goes, they don't really care, as long as it's not, it's not to Ukraine. This is how you can use this for diversion tactics. Making all roads and possible conclusions go away from the conclusion that sending money to Ukraine is what you want. Sending money to Ukraine is the goal to be avoided in this circumstance. The message will mutate, it will change, it might not even be the same narrative, but the effect is more important than the message. It's not about the words, it's about the meaning. A fun thing about social media, though, is that its origins are cloudy for any type of narrative or fact. Think of memes. You've seen memes on the internet. If you haven't, um, go see some memes. I can't describe it at the moment. This video would be too long. But even dedicated individuals that spend almost their entire life hunting down the origins of these have a difficult time finding who posted it first. They might even find the wrong person who posted it first and think that's the first person. And even if they did find that first person, people using the meme all still wouldn't know. The origin would still be unknown to everybody who it would matter to. Even if he told them, they might not even believe him. It's usually in, made by different people, so there's not a central meme lord where all memes are born from that you can really point to. Russian propagandists act the same, and they really capitalize on it. Online a Russian misinformation campaign is six interlocking pillars of tactics. Each one strengthens the others in different ways. Modern Russian disinformation would be impossible if one or two were to be destroyed. It hides in groups that are in conflict with other groups. It uses emotions wherever it can to replace facts or bridge holes in logic. It is high volume and multi-channel. It's rapid, continuous, and repetitive, and it lacks commitment to objective reality, and it most infamously lacks commitment to consistency. These are traits that are only available in the information age. Pick any other time in history and they'd be more or less not possible. And nobody does this as well as Russia. Other countries do it, I'm sure, but not to this scale I've ever seen. I'm going to go over how these manifest as strengths and some examples for them. First, it hides in groups and uses groups to its advantage. 
This is where you'll get spoof accounts that present as not Russian accounts, but as patriotic stereotypes of people in their target country of group. Uh, in the U.S., it's usually somebody that presents as uh, far mid-right wing individuals. Um, they usually have big old flags next to their profile pictures. And if you are on the mid to right wing or a patriotic person in general, you are more likely to trust the patriotic person than an overtly Russian account, especially if their sources are all in English. I'd like to have you guess why Russia Today has English broadcasting. The message as well is tailored to the desired victim. When Russia wanted to stop aid to Ukraine, they presented it as $10 billion going to Ukraine instead of Hawaii. This is while the information space was full of conservative discourse, was full of wildfire conspiracies mostly, and criticizing Biden for a lack of support, which was valid at some points. Victims that believe this narrative, or support this narrative, or spread this narrative, don't see themselves as attacking Ukraine and supporting Russia in their mind. They're fighting liberals and their political enemies while defending Hawaii and the budget, or really defending whoever trusted figure parroted the misinformation. For example, if Tucker Carlson or Elon Musk parrot Russian propaganda and people point out that it's a Russian talking point that they've adopted, the first thing that happens is people defend the person. And, you know, let's think about that for a moment. If you go up to somebody and you say, I, hey, this guy that you like seems to have been manipulated and has adopted something that is Russian mis- or disinformation. And usually that's countered by, why do you got to attack my guy, my bro, my clan bro, in his ideas that I like, that he thought of? Loyalty kind of overrides a bit of thought at that point. Loyalty is an emotion. It's emotionally based. And emotions make things more believable. Let's say if you are married to somebody, you're more likely to believe something they tell you than somebody that you really don't like. You can be mad enough and hate somebody so much that when they tell you the sky is blue, you start to not believe it. And some of the ways that emotions can make things more believable is you can use emotions to kind of black out the critical thinking response in the brain and make some bridges between points and logic that would not be there if they were just objectively neutral on emotion. In these situations, the fire of conflict is already lit. They just offer fuel for the fire. With all this said, it does not pick sides necessarily. The wind is blowing on the right at the moment. Leftists are not as useful at the moment and conservatives are. The Russians will help whoever's useful. It preys on people's loyalty, but it has no loyalty except for the goal. And sometimes in very rare circumstances, Russia itself will come out of the shadows and say up front and say, we are your enemies. Everyone agrees that we are bad, but even we agree with you. If they think it will progress what they want. Putin didn't necessarily say that Americans should keep their guns out of kindness or belief that it was the right thing to do. He likely said that because in his mind, angry people that his propaganda is trying to target, having guns is more useful. And it is important to note, it's very important to note, to remember that victims, targets of disinformation, can often spread it while being completely un unaware. I would like to say when I say victim, I mean somebody who it's supposed to manipulate, not that it's supposed to damage. Some Russian shills, they're just gullible people. Your uncle that just kind of goes along with all the things he hears, he's not a Russian plant. Nobody's paying him. He's just a victim. And there's a lot of talk, especially in the US, about mainstream media being very biased. And I do not necessarily see it along party lines, but I do see it around money lines. They'll pick up any story that's profitable, especially negative stories. Negative stories make you angry, and they can generate clicks. And if you're angry, you click more. They want to make you angry to make more money, and they usually don't care if it's Russian disinformation if it, as long as it's profitable. Pause. This video is sponsored by, not a company, but two fine individuals named Not Me and Alan Walken. I do not run unskippable ads because I hate them. I think they're terrible, and I don't like them. If they appear, that means that I need to stage a righteous rebellion against my capitalist overlords YouTube. But seriously, they gave me five bucks each. No matter what, they didn't need to. And I feel really bad about it because I just have their money now and they don't have their money and I didn't give them anything for the money. So take this shout out now, you two little beans. It's the best I can do. And if you too have too much money to spend on your own, go over to this cool link here. It's in the description, buymeacoffee.com. Give me money, guilt trip me, give me the coffee fueled panicked delusions that I love to have. It's like a Patreon, but it's kind of my style, my brand. I'll put odds and bits and bobs and keep up to date list in my YouTube activities. My list of community posts is way too long anyways, but without further ado. Also somehow while I was recording this, this is the editor editor by the way, I edited it once to put in this and then I'm doing my quality thing and this is 
the quality me editing. Um, yeah, while I was doing that, someone decided to subscribe as a member. So they give me money each month. Um, someone is their name. That's what they're called. Their name is someone. I'd also like to give them a shout out. This isn't, I was not prepared for this either. Um, they're probably going to show up in other videos as well because member, they give me money each month. So yeah, got to put that in there. Last sec. Another key pillar to it is it is also high volume and multi-channel. Meaning that you can find it in almost every corner of the internet and en masse. This can be advantageous in many different ways. You can get to people first. You can present a type of consensus that makes it look like people in your group have this opinion. It also makes it look like an opinion or claim is organic. And if there's enough of it, it will go into spaces that it won't be resisted. And if it is resisted, overwhelmed. If everyone around you says that ice cream is the best food on the planet, humans tend to do their best to conform. And if everyone else seems to agree, you would normally conclude that ice cream is probably the best. You don't want to be the odd one out. Everyone else agrees on it, so they must be right, right? Adding on to that subconscious peer pressure, it continues for days, weeks, sometimes months, sometimes years, and it's rather repetitive, repeating it over and over and over and over again. Try to debunk a lie? Well, they post while you sleep and new people see it, and they'll do it every night. Human brains correlate frequency and credibility. Because the human brain can be often lazy. They can't fool me though, because I am much dumber than the average human. Something you've heard maybe six times from various different people is much easier to continue to believe than a counter-argument that's rare and new. Think everybody in your office telling you one thing, but some homeless guy tells you something. Your brain says, no, I'll just stick with the office workers. It's more credible, of course. Not to mention that disinformation like this is rather confidently spoken. And often when they're debunked, you realize they're quite obviously lies. Such as the claim that the war never happened. You can check that really easily. But for John, the overworked office worker, scrolling through Twitter during his lunch, he isn't going to Google it or check the comments. He's going to log the new info and scroll on. Fighting a fire hose with a towel might work for a second or two, but it's just too much too quickly. And when you need to eat, sleep, or drink, or do anything else, but mop up the mess, it still runs unimpeded. And you can, sure, you can go into every YouTube comment section, but they still have to read the comments. These four foundational pillars are an enabling force, and you may notice there's two more pillars to go, but they're an enabling force for the two most powerful next pillars. The most powerful, and then the most surprising and unconventional pillars. First is that it has no commitment to reality. It uses facts and the truth all the time, don't get me wrong. That's an integral part. It's the hard piece of metal at the chewy center that's supposed to break your teeth when you fight against it. But as it, at the moment, uses right-wing conservatives to spread its message as tools, reality as well is just a tool to be useful. Small parts can change to fabricate individual facts, fabricate stories that never happened. Take the submarine that was attacked recently. The Russian report was that it was struck and lightly damaged. Many of you have probably seen the photo, but it's not lightly damaged, quite the contrary. It will never float again. It is not seaworthy at all. But the only word in that statement that is wrong is the word lightly. If you already bought the Ukrainian missile strikes were ineffective, then you would never bat an eye at that statement. Heck, if you take lightly out of it and just damaged, it wouldn't be wrong at all. It would be a bit misleading, but it wouldn't even be a lie. After all, if the truth isn't very convincing, don't tell the truth. But there is a reason that you don't want to lie. You would gain the reputation as a liar. This is conventional wisdom. If people out you as a liar, your credibility is shot forever and will always be there. But this is where the other ones come together. Russian propaganda does not care for consistency. Let me explain. Consistency is a limiting factor. If you tell somebody the, the sky is green and then also tell them the sky is red, they'll notice the contradiction and just tell you to piss off. They won't believe either of them. They'll say it's blue. But if somebody says it's red and then the other person says it's green, you're split on the option there. Neither of them are contradicting themselves and you think to yourself, well, it could be red or it could be green. It's certainly not blue. It's one of those. All of the traits form kind of a, a monolith, a hive mind, a constant, repeated, widespread narratives and lies and half-true statements all flooding in at once, constantly, day after day. Produces different flavors that can appeal to many different groups at once. Don't think the Ukraine aid should go to Hawaii? Okay, how about Florida? You don't like chocolate? How about vanilla? Doesn't matter what flavor it is, they just want you to eat the ice cream. The bot account doesn't care about Hawaii, it doesn't care about Florida, it doesn't even care about money being spent. 
but it cares about Ukraine getting less aid. And if one of those other stories or narratives or conclusions get there, it's done its job. The funniest thing about that, at the end of that campaign, turns out the 10 billion number wasn't a number that actually existed. It was a made up number. Congress wasn't even in session. Something that's useful to debunk and attack these types of narratives is don't attack the flavor, don't attack the vanilla, don't attack chocolate. Attack the ice cream. Hawaii doesn't need Bradleys and cluster shells. The aid that goes to Ukraine isn't even money. That's in, what, the millions? And even at the end of that, it produces something that's near impossible to fight. Like the example I've given, some people will still remember the 10 billion. And when they're at the ballot box months, days, or years from now, none of that might still be in their mind. They may have never even heard the rebuttal, but they'll just remember it. They'll remember all of the campaigns just in the back of their mind. You can make people who have truly bought into a narrative vote in certain ways, cause divisions, and on a lower level, change how entire portions of society think. Sometimes the goal is just to make you distrust a credible media source so the next campaign will be harder to destroy and more effective. Sometimes it's to convince public opinion towards one conclusion or to discredit specific conclusion they don't like. And sometimes they just yell, grab some pots and pans, start slamming them together, and the people who are looking for information, they just give up or disengage. And while no, they're not gonna vote for whatever their goal is, but they're certainly not gonna vote against it. They might even believe it in the future once everything calms down and the people who are trying to dispel it just leave. It almost has a sense of winning even when it's losing. Even when it's not convincing people, it's still effective. And that's kind of scary. Funnily enough, as a former member of the alt-right and former fascist, I can't help but notice that extremist political groups, especially on the right and Nazi groups, use the same exact rhetorical tactics to get what they want. And it might be reasonable to assume that it's in part because they are the current main target for Russia and some of that filters through, but also maybe because it has a lot of hints of just how fascist propaganda tends to spread itself. But the tactics for political extremists are a topic for later, another video even, which I'm planning on making sometime in the future, giving some insight for myself as a former insider. But how do you fight it? Well, to be honest, it's just plain hard. So much of it can be handled through unknowing proxy accounts that fighting individuals is not worthwhile. There is no person to lose. There is no central disinformation meme lord. No disinformation king to behead. It's silly, it's dumb, it's contradictory, it doesn't make any sense. But most terrifyingly, it works. Destroy a narrative and another one appears with the same goal. Fighting it feels impossible. You can debunk an argument, but when they don't care about being consistent and they don't care about telling the truth, they can make up whatever they want. It's hard. It's like fighting a gelatinous cube. You shoot down their argument and they'll you say, well, you know, it would be a lot more convincing to people if you were to say this, this, and that. But that's not the truth, so you can't say it. But they do, and people believe them. And they get away with it, because they don't care. And they don't have to. And that's depressing. I don't like thinking about that. It makes me all frustrated, and I don't want to be frustrated. I'm just a little cat boy that does little fun stuff on the internet. I'm comedic. I feel weird being this depressingly serious for this long. But hey, it doesn't have to be bad. I've got a few ideas on how to fight this kind of stuff. Really, just follow the main rule. Never ever take your eye off the ball. It always has a goal. Refute that goal. Refute larger narratives. A narrative such as Russia is winning the Ukraine war, it's designed to be short, quippy, and used for a long term. But it cannot be used for a long term, because they keep losing. Because it has no regard for reality or consistency, it may be first, but on a long enough time frame, the truth does eventually start to wear down no matter how many narratives they come up with. If it has no regard for reality or consistency, fight the one thing they can't change by principle. They cannot change their goal. If they did, they'd lose. Don't fight chocolate. Don't fight vanilla. They want you to fight vanilla. That's why they made it. They want you to fight vanilla. They want you to fight chocolate. Don't fight flavors, fight ice cream. And it will never end. It's a little depressing, but it's the reality. Crime always happens. Theft always happens. Murders always happen since the beginning of humankind. But it's gotten better. If the fire hose never stops, then we just have to be vigilant. Never stop fighting. But more specifically now, people need to know the people in their clan, people in their tribe, sometimes the things they put out are fake. Sometimes they put out things that are specifically meant to manipulate people. Some things are really too good to be true. And it might sound cliche, but people need to know that you can't believe everything you hear on the internet. No matter how tempting it is. I've done it too. 
outside forces are a thing. People will try to use you for their own ends, even if it helps you. To help people recognize things by themselves, the weakness is that to get to the advantages of the pillars of this technique, it needs a legion of victims of willing or unwilling people to spread it like a pathogen. Less victims means less potential victims. And like normal, it takes times, but perhaps there'll be less of a fire hose and more of a sink tap. Water drip, drip, dripping, but slower, more manageable. And over time, people will become waterproof, harder to permeate, harder to convince. As that goes on, as I've seen it personally go on in my own life and seeing the internet, I'm confident that it'll become easier. And it's important to remember, they aren't winning. They might get close and it might look like they're winning, but support for Ukraine stands mostly strong. There's a reason that Russians use amplification of stories about other countries protesting aid going to Ukraine. It's to make you seem isolated, make themselves seem strong and winning. Because if you think the fight's already over, you're going to put your gun away. Their tactics rely on making you feel small, insignificant, you're losing, you can't beat them. Take some advice from me. Don't buy it. All right, I got a video out this month. I'm, I'm happy about that. That usually doesn't happen, but yeah, we did it. Not super happy with how it turned out, of course, but sometimes I repeated myself. The audio was actually pretty smooth. I was happy about that. The editing quality was... There was some black spots because, you know, there's... It's not easy to do concepts with stock footage, to be honest. I would love to be able to be brave enough to show my face to talk in front of a camera, but alas, I am not. So... Not happy about that, but these are mostly designed to be listened to when you're doing the dishes or something, so that doesn't nearly matter too much to me. I'm not super happy about the fact that I, um, <clears throat> uh, had at the <laughs> halfway through that I kind of, uh, published the link for the Buy My Coffee because I don't want to. I feel really bad if I'm upfront with, like, hey, you can give me money because. I'm still kind of in the very much in the mindset of like I, this is very much a hobby and it should it it's not good stuff either so paying me is like why would you do that but people then paid me so I felt like I had to shout them out anyways and also I don't have a lot of money so it's a good idea to do so but it just gives me the ick it just gives me gives me the ick real bad but I did it anyway some other news with the channel I'm going to be doing monthly videos maybe sooner but most that stick for monthly. Um, this was a test to see if I could do something monthly. I can, yay. I like doing that monthly, but I wish I could have cracked more jokes in this one. I didn't, but it's kind of a more serious topic and I was a little upset because of the things I was talking about and remembering and reliving, but yeah, not a very funny one. Wish it was, but I'm gonna leave it off here. I'm going to be making a new video here soon. Probably going to be starting the script tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, about Wednesday, Thursday, Friday-ish. We'll be uh, writing the script for the next one. I really got the motivation for it, so I might as well. There's a lot of projects coming, and since YouTube is now my main source of income for the moment, I have to. So, anyways, I will be seeing all of you lovely people some other time. Have fun with the end of the world as we know it, or... The beginning of the world as other people will know it, or the continuation of the world as most people understand it. I don't know what's gonna go on. I'm just a guy. I'm just a talking cat boy on the internet. But maybe you will get nuked and die. Maybe. Maybe they're coming for you.